even though it's the 21st century, we're still struggling with people to understand that indigenous people are still here. And that when we're wearing contemporary clothes of the 21st century, that doesn't take away our indigeneity. You're not dressed like your ancestors from 400 years ago. You're not talking like them from 400 years ago. You're not even living the life ways that they did. But somehow, as indigenous people, if we're not living like our ancestors did in 1400, there's this notion that we're no longer indigenous. Part of that is the way the history is taught. It's almost always taught in the past tense. If they even mention Narragansett at all, it's during King Philip's War, it's over, they're enslaved, they're massacred, they're gone. But in reality, we did exist. And it took 100 years to prove that legally and to get federal recognition and acknowledgement of that. According to the census, I believe it was 8,500 indigenous people live in Rhode Island. But there's like 1.5 million people living in Rhode Island, 8,500. 1.5 million. That's why we become invisible, but it's our homeland. The lands that you're walking on, the resources that you see, the cities that have been built upon our homelands and our villages and our communities, it just creates an invisibility because of our numbers. You can go travel all across the United States and you will see casinos in various tribes in the Narragansett have been denied this. This is certainly a denial of our pursuit of economic happiness for our people. We have the highest rates of unemployment in the state. We have the highest rates of poverty in the state. We have high rates of alcoholism and drug abuse. And all of these things come from that historic trauma that we have been put through. People don't understand where these hurts come from and how they've built up over generations and why they have the pain and the frustration and the social ills in our community that they do. And it really stems from a long and tenuous history with this country. It's the boarding school generation and what that did and the breakdown to our communities. It's indentured servitude in a lot of New England communities and what that did in the breakdown in families. It's the loss of land, of culture, it's identity, it's, it's the state of Rhode Island telling us that Narragansett people don't exist anymore and taking that away from us um, and our constant fight as a community to, to show that we still exist, that we're still here, um, but what that does to people's psyches and what that does within your families. People are flabbergasted when we tell them what's in the Declaration of Independence. When they find out that one of the major goals was new appropriations of land, that they weren't just happy with 13 colonies they just created a country out of, now they were already trying to go westward. And in order to do that, they had to create propaganda. They call this merciless Indian savages whose known rules of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. That vilified us, it dehumanized us, and it also let people know you need to take up your arms against them because they're going to kill you if you don't kill them first. And that's part of the propaganda that took place. And that's in the founding doctrine of this country. And, and people are stunned by that. I even had some college students that are like, we should rewrite this. I'm like, unfortunately, you can't rewrite history. This is the Declaration of Independence. You can't change the Declaration of Independence, but you can learn from it. You can learn from the impact that that has on a whole race of people. The past is what it is. We can't change the past. Some of the things in the past are very hurtful. Um, it sometimes causes people feelings of guilt. But we don't have to live in the past and we don't have to let the past define our future. We have the ability to make positive changes towards the future if we get involved and let our voices be heard and make our, vo make our votes count. Many tribes have, you know, were displaced and they're, they're working at coming home. We, we this, <laughs> this is our home. Rhode Island, the lands around Rhode Island, the Narragansett Bay, this is where we come from. And um, we want everyone to know we're not going anywhere. <laughs>